I'm Matt with Grotto Custom Cellars, and uh, it's just Sunday night here, Southern California. Not too sunny today, but uh, anyways, just thought I'd show you guys what we do um, when it comes time to grill and chill out here. So, um, what I'm standing next to is the Big Green Egg. I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but this is pretty much the be-all, end-all when it comes to uh, grills and smokers. It's uh, all ceramic, and this is the large size. So. I just cleaned it out and I was going to show you kind of how I pack the charcoal up in here. Um, this is something that a lot of people probably aren't aware of, but it's really important when you're building a fire, you're using natural, uh, natural charcoal. And look at this here. This is lump charcoal. It's not briquettes or anything like that. This is going to give you a much cleaner burn. It's going to get a lot hotter and, uh, you know, it's all natural right there. So this Royal Oak brand, it's okay. I've used it a few times. It's not my favorite, but you know, it's what I can find on a Sunday. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm packing it by hand. And, you know, it's a little bit of a little bit of a pain, but definitely works out better. And I'm just looking for the bigger pieces like this to go on the bottom, and uh, that's going to improve airflow and lead to a bigger and hotter fire. Um, Kind of dig around in the back a little bit to get some of the, the better pieces out. And as you get closer to the top, it's okay to you know go ahead and use the, the smaller ones. It's not as big of a deal. But these little pieces get down there and they block up the vents and the, the holes, and you really can't uh, can't get a good fire going. You can't have good airflow. So that's probably good for right now. If you want to come take a look at that, I just got a couple of steaks that we're going to throw on the grill. Voila. All right, so here we are, just uh, getting close to bringing this uh, grill up to temperature. Just want to show you guys what's going on here. Not sure if you can see that or not. If you focus on it, that is. Uh, well, just about 625 degrees right there is uh, is what you're looking at. I'll show you what's going on kind of inside this thing here. That's some serious fire right there. So uh, stand back. Let's burp this a little bit. Sometimes you get a little bit of a backflash uh, on these right here, backdraft kind of thing. Um, this is basically what we're looking for here. Maybe let some of those get just a little bit wider there, kind of on the bottom. But um, Get a nice good hot fire going actually at this point. Go ahead and put the uh, grate on. Just get this guy nice and ready to sear our steaks with. Go ahead and shut this back down, leave the lid off on it, let it keep doing its thing, get hot, and we'll be right back. We on? Yeah. Okay, so here we are. Um, I got two steaks today from the butcher. Picked these up about two hours ago. They've been sitting out, trying to bring them up to room temperature um, ever since. That might concern some of you guys, but it shouldn't. You should definitely let your meat get up to, to room temperature as much as possible. Um, for no real rhyme or reason, we decided to uh, actually get two different cuts of meat tonight, and uh, just, you know, they both look so good. Couldn't decide which one. Um, like I said, both are dry aged. This is a uh, bone in ribeye right here. And uh, right next to it, I've got a, a dry aged bone in sirloin as well. Um, I'm just going to start with some of this garlic oil on it right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's available pretty much everywhere. Um, gentlemen, not from the butcher shop I got these at, but uh, Ethan at Whole Foods in Long Beach turned me onto this, um, I don't know, several years ago. And, uh, you know, it's just a simple fix to uh, pour this on your steaks, just rub it on both sides. Coat them in nice there. Do this guy as well. Excellent. So let me just wash this off real quick. Okay. And from there, I'm just going to do just a little bit of, uh, of salt and pepper. And uh, recently, we were up at the uh, Pebble Beach Wine and Food, and I was told you need to sprinkle the salt and pepper from as high as possible to evenly distribute it. That was uh, from Thomas Keller. 
That's all I walked away from uh, in this presentation, basically. Sprinkle your salt and pepper high when you're seasoning meats. And of course, let them sit out. We talked a lot about that as well. Um, so just a little bit of salt and uh, pepper. And it's really interesting what he had to say about this. And I guess it really makes sense, and I've just never given it any thought. But, you know, salt enhances the flavors that are already there, and, and pepper kind of changes the flavors that are already there. So, you know, that's something that I haven't been able to stop thinking about as I season my meats and dishes uh, in a couple weeks since that. Um, so I'm going to let these sit for about five minutes and we'll put them on the grill. Right, to go with these steaks and everything else that we're working on tonight, we've picked out a, uh, what is this, a 2006 Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, it's called Earthquake from uh, Lodi Vineyards. Never had this before. The uh, gentleman at the butcher shop was really big on it and uh, said we should try it. Figure we'll give it a go and see what we think. Go ahead and pull the cork out on this thing. Sometimes that trick works better than others. Cut the foil off instead of pulling it off. No big deal. Alright. So this will be interesting to see how this is. Should be um, hopefully pretty decent. I'd like to think he wouldn't have recommended something that he didn't know what he was talking about or uh, enjoyable. Let's see what we've got here. It's my guess that we're going to need to decant this um, just to kind of open it up a little bit more. I generally like to do that, especially with uh, kind of younger wines here. It's kind of smoky. It's going to be good. I think it's going to go really nice with that meat right there. Um, so let's go ahead and just dump this in here. Heck not. Let's see if I Probably pouring this a little quicker than uh, what I normally would, but I'm kind of hustling here. I'm hungry to get going with these steaks. So. There's that, and if you want to follow me, we'll go ahead and put these puppies on the grill. So we're still right hovering around 625 degrees like I showed you before, and uh, just going to go ahead and watch out for a backdraft on this. you got to really burp these things before you, uh, before you open them up. So I don't know if you can stand the heat to kind of see what these coals look like over here, but they are uh, white hot blazing, ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set both of these guys on here, just like this, and sear them for a couple of minutes on each side, maybe like a minute and a half, two minutes, until I can pick it up and uh, take it off without tearing anything. Flip it. As I rotate them, I'll try to move them to a uh, spot on a grill that's warm, and then we'll take them off for about 20 minutes. So I'll show you that we're ready to take them off.